Hey everyone, Pushing Up Roses here. In this video, I'm going to give you my initial thoughts on Grim Fandango Remastered, which has been released on the PC, the PS4, and the Vita this month. Before I go any further into pros, cons, opinions, what have you, full disclosure, Grim Fandango is my favorite adventure game of all time, if not my favorite game across all genres. I love the game, the premise, the writing, and the atmosphere no matter what due to having played it right around the same time my dad passed away and my absurd obsession with death and all things related. So I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about the existing story, but I will touch on the things I like or dislike about the remastered version. To give you a brief description, Grim Fandango is a noir-style adventure game which follows Manny Calavera, a salesman that finds afterlife travel packages for people who have passed away. I mean, wouldn't you rather cross the land of the dead in your own sports car? Maybe try a luxury ocean cruise? Or, if you led a very good life, you may even be eligible for a ticket on the number 9 itself. Manny finds out there's corruption within his workplace, the Department of Death, and sets out on a dangerous journey to figure things out. This game takes a lot of inspiration from titles like Casablanca and the Maltese Falcon, and features really entertaining voice acting, beautifully pre-rendered backgrounds, a jazzy soundtrack, and death. I love being surrounded by death, and I love noir murder mysteries. <sighs> I'm feeling particularly hard-boiled now. I need a drink and a cigarette. This video is going to touch on the PC version, as PC is my platform of choice. First thing I want to touch on is the new point-and-click interface. If you're unaware, this game was initially made with tank controls, and if you watch my Let's Play on this game I recorded a few months ago, you'll recall me constantly running into doors, getting stuck in elevators, and fidgeting with the clunky controls. And even though I said I liked it at first because that's just what I grew up on, blah blah blah, this point-and-click interface is really, really nice. I can't believe how much more playable the game is. The inventory is also much easier to work with. Running around is much, much smoother, and because I don't need to bother with the keyboard, I actually find myself examining things in the game that I never even noticed during my initial gameplay, since the eyeball icon makes it that much easier. Normally I'm a purist when it comes to media, I always like the originals even if the controls aren't the best, but even I have to admit, point and click is the way to go. Good improvement. I've complained about running into walls about 95% less than my previous playthrough. The texture upgrades are really nice, the characters now have a more modern, smoothed out appearance. When I first opened the game, I thought to myself, wait, this doesn't look any different, does it? Then I switched back to the original mode, which you can do within this version, by the way, and realized how much nicer it really did look. The original is still awesome, if you want my personal opinion, and is held up really well, but it's really cool to see some of these enhancements. I especially like the new dynamic lighting, which really complements the dramatic atmosphere. I feel like these updates are what the developers originally wanted for Grim Fandango. The light shining through the blinds and the specific lighting you see on characters when there's a light source in the room is really visually appealing and adds that touch of 1940s murder mystery while completing the noir-inspired theme of the game. Oh, also, Gladys's clipping mouth is all fixed. Hallelujah. I can literally count his teeth. The commentary is quite amusing, even though I found myself getting distracted by it. It's really insightful for older fans of the game and offers a lot of notes about more technical aspects and challenges of its creation, as told by some of the original developers, as well as some goofy quips that had me snickering. Thermonuclear flaming bone beavers. Yeah, you know, I have to say flaming bone beavers. I mean, Should we think that would be that remind you of? I, yeah. A band? A band name? Maybe. Personally, I am a commentary junkie. I will listen to the commentary on just about anything. The achievements are pretty cute as well, and I found myself smiling whenever I unlocked one, even though they're really not the most complicated achievements in the world. A lot of the achievements come from following certain dialogue trees or using certain objects. It's like the game is saying, nice job on being thorough, you, and for an adventure game, that makes total sense. Run, you pigeons! It's Robert Frost! There's some concept art already available for your viewing pleasure upon opening, and the rest needs to be unlocked during gameplay. Just like the Monkey Island Special Editions that were released a few years back, you can switch between original and remastered modes, which I found myself doing a lot of just to see how different the characters look. I also really enjoy the updated music. The original game featured synthesized swing music, and the remaster features some new recordings performed by a live orchestra. Just like in the original game, the music is quite special and incredibly sexy. Sexy equals sexy plus saxophone. Mm. Another really cool thing is that the game has been translated into five additional languages. German, Spanish, French, Italian, and Portuguese. As far as resolution goes, the game has two options for widescreen support, stretched or letterboxed. I surmise that in order to support a true widescreen, the existing backgrounds and cutscenes would have needed to be redone, and I don't know how realistic that task would have been. I'm guessing that some people might be irked by these options, but personally, it's not a deal breaker, nor does it upset me. 
I figure I would at least mention this to those who do care and are considering whether or not to purchase this game, and I'm trying to give it a fair assessment despite my undying love for it. Another thing worth considering are the minimum specs needed to run the game on your PC. They're somewhat high, requiring a graphics card and driver that supports OpenGL 3.3 or higher. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to run the game on a slightly older PC from 2011, but my 2014 laptop ran it just fine, so this game was obviously developed for newer systems. I can definitely see people taking issue with this or feeling disappointed, so it's something to keep in mind if you're wanting to play this on the computer. You also have the option of playing the PC version with an Xbox controller, which I tried briefly to get a feel of how it would work on a console. Gameplay reminded me of the previous tank controls and felt a little awkward to me, but I do like the fact that playing it on the PS4 is an option. Overall, I do like this remaster and it did fit my expectations. Keep in mind that I'm going to love this game no matter what, as previously mentioned. It's just a great game with an engaging story, and I can listen to Tony Plana as Manny Calavera all day. That voice, man. That voice. I am severely touched. Did you know Tony Plana was an ugly buddy? You remember that show? I couldn't watch it without thinking of Manny whenever I saw him. Anyway, despite there being potential issues, specifically with the PC requirements, I am thrilled that my favorite game is available to play on modern systems without having to deal with virtual machines and other things that not everyone will be tech-savvy enough to understand. The original box version is insanely hard to find and is insanely expensive if you do find it, and the individual jewel cases can sometimes be found on Amazon or eBay for between $30 and $60. Asking price for the remaster is $14.99 for anywhere between 12 to 20 hours of gameplay. I do think this price is fair considering the prices on the CDs and the box versions, but more importantly is the fact that it'll be easier for a large group of people to run and play. Some of the most frequent questions and comments I get about these older Windows games is how do I run them, followed by lamenting about not being able to. I think it's really important that this game can now run without jumping through hoops or needing the CDs. This will open the game up to a much wider audience and save people money and frustration. Even without the extra perks, I would likely still purchase it just for the ease of playing it again on a newer system. Hopefully what I'm saying here, along with my other videos on the game, will give you a good idea whether or not this is something you'd be interested in buying. I know that not everyone will hold the same enthusiasm as I do about this. It's so cool! Wanna hear about it? So it's really worth watching and reading other reviews on it, but I can say quite earnestly that I am so excited to see my favorite game out there for a new generation of gaming enthusiasts to try out, and for existing fans who can now revisit it with a few extra perks. I'm seriously having to hold back even sappier sentiments because I'm trying to be professional here. I'll conclude with this. I still find this game gorgeous and worthwhile. I've done other videos on Grim Fandango, and if you'd like to check them out, they will be linked in the annotations. As always, thank you for taking the time to listen, and viva la revolucion! Hey everyone, welcome to the annotation screen! Is it a thrilling? To the left you will find a let's play of the original Grim Fandango, and to the right you'll find a video of me talking about death. If you want, you can also pester me on my social media or check out my Patreon page for extra thingamies. Be sure to leave all your grim quotes in the comments. I love quotes. I live for quotes. I talk in quotes. Okay, bye. <laughs>